Now this next section, beginning in verse 25, is about his disciples going out to, to preach the gospel. He says to them, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? And then he gives this beautiful analogy, Behold the fowls of the air, and it makes you wonder if there was a flock of birds overhead right at that moment as he points, because he is so able as the master teacher to use things that, that really connect with people, and that from then on they'll be able to remember this. Next time they see a flock of birds, the, the memory of his voice echoing in their mind, consider these, these fowls up in the air. They sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? They're creatures. They were created by him, but you aren't a creature. You are a child of God. You, you have capacity to, to grow up to become more like him. Now, verse 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And then he compares it to Solomon, the richest, most prosperous king in possibly the history of the ancient Near East. Of all the kings, this guy excelled all of them in wisdom and in, and in riches, and he's saying, look at the lilies of the field, these, these flowers that are growing here in the Galilee, and you can imagine the people looking at them, and he's saying they're not toiling, they're not laboring, but God gives them the raiment that they need. Uh, it reminds me of a, a family history story of my great-grandpa living in Clarkston, Utah. He had been called on a mission, and back then these men are called on missions from general conference, from the pulpit, and then they would have to leave their families, their wives and children, their farm, and go on the mission. Well, that was his situation, and he didn't have a ton of extra money, and his shoes weren't great. He was cr walking across a field in the city center there in Clarkston, Utah, when he looked down and saw a gleam and picked up a silver five-dollar coin, and he thought, ah, oh, perfect. Answer from heaven, I'm going to be able to go and buy a nice pair of new shoes to serve this mission because it costs five dollars at the time. And then the thought came, take that coin to brother so-and-so because he doesn't have any shoes. And the thought was, well, maybe I'll go buy the new shoes and give these old ones to him. I've always been inspired by my great-grandpa who acted on that and he went and gave that five dollar uh, coin to this brother who was able to go and buy shoes so he could go on the mission. And then at one point serving on his mission, and now there are holes in the bottom of his shoes, they've worn out, there's, there's nothing left, and once again walking on a road, one day he looked down and saw a gleam and there was another five dollar coin that he was able to find and go and get shoes. That, to me, is the epitome of what Jesus is teaching in, in this chapter, is we live in a world that wants to hoard everything for ourself, and he's saying, can you trust me? <laughs> I hold worlds without number in my hand. I clothe the, f the flowers of the field, and I take care of the birds of the sky. I will take care of my servants. I will provide for them as the needs arise. It's, it's a, a powerful concept on the covenant path for us.